Hey, hey, welcome to LBC TV, the International Live Beat Channel. I've got a very, very cool thing to show you today. I am here with my friend Calvin McCormack, and he's been pioneering some pretty, pretty cool tech when it comes to integrating the brain and outputting cool data that you can turn into music or visuals or probably lots of other things. So I've kind of tentatively called this brain to MIDI because this is a joke that I used to always make with my friends was, wouldn't it just be so much more convenient if you had like RCA to brain out, like you didn't have to mess around with plugins and try to recreate the sound in your head? Well, this could possibly be the start of this kind of technology. So today we are gonna interview Calvin a little bit and then he's gonna do a performance. Today we've got some Volta visuals adding to the visual that Calvin already has in the background. And we have a lot of cool gear, which we'll also go through today. But first, hey, Calvin. Hey, how's it going? Good. <laughs> nice to have you. Um, why don't you tell us just a little bit about how you got started as a musician, uh, kind of just briefly to where you are now? Sure. Um, well, I studied jazz in, um, in undergrad and have, you know, um, done a lot of different musical things, I guess. Um, so I was actually just watching um, Elena's, uh, Elena, who's behind the camera, actually was had a cool special on EEGs um, on in her house about 15 months ago. And I was like, oh, that's, that's cool that that exists. Um, so I looked into it and, and here I am from, from jazz to whatever this is. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So to fill it out a bit more, I met Calvin when he was a student here at Berkeley Valencia. Uh, and this was originally part of your, your thesis project, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you originally came into it sort of not knowing what you were going to do. And then after that EEG, you just made up your mind or? Yeah, well, I, you know, I kind of, I asked Elena, um, started looking into what ones are available. This is the, the OpenBCI um, Saiton EEG and it's, um, it's, I think like the only, um, open source one. So you're really able to take the data out of this and do whatever you want with it. Um, and then, so the way I have it lined up here is that, um, this computer is like parsing the data with processing and then max MSP, and then that's sending it over the network to this computer, which is running Ableton and touch designer. Amazing. And so how does that work exactly? What actually changes the data from the EEG? Is it like your mood? Is it like, you know, what, what factors would make this data happen? Right. So it's a bit, um, that's definitely the hardest part of it is that the data is pretty obscure. I mean, right now, um, one of the pieces of data is just, there's eight electrodes on here. So each one is sending out a voltage, um, which is pretty noisy. And then, um, from the the individual voltages, you can get the different, um, I guess, band power. So there's like fine, five main types of um, brainwave, uh, delta, theta, gamma, uh, alpha, and beta. And so mainly you're looking at the alpha and beta waves and the relationship between the two um, uh, kind of tells you uh, like more relaxed versus more engaged and um, gives you kind of a general overview of, of the brain waves, it doesn't quite, um, it's not quite at the clarity where you can think a color or a musical note, but you can use it to kind of like, kind of turning a giant knob and you can kind of guide some things and use LFOs to kind of have some conscious control over, over things. It also has an accelerometer and um, it works really well as an EMG, like just for muscle um, recognition. So it, it, you can kind of manually override it by just kind of tensing your face and um and doing it that way really and you were telling me before we started that you would prefer to be sitting down versus standing up so what does that do how does that affect the da data if you're standing up yeah just as as little movement as possible which is kind of hard doing like an electronic set because you, <laughs> you bopping your head is not is is really unhelpful um but yeah i when i was kind of rehearsing it standing up you just notice a lot more noise um on the higher end of the spectrum and um i know it's it's not the coolest to be sitting for a set but um I, it works for like craft work i guess for sure yeah. <laughs> for sure for sure and i i know that we're going to bring the audience back another time and show them the actual screens but maybe can you describe to them a little bit about like how this data how you're using it like i know for instance you were showing me all kinds of different midi instruments like what what functions have you found for this data um well you know, anything that you want you know you really want to keep it um broad in terms of what you're putting into it um it, you know 
you don't want to make it try. I've used machine learning to mm -hmm. try to get more specific things, but that's pretty hit and miss, and you have to like really set it up and train it properly. Um, but uh, one of the cooler applications I found is using uh, like automated um, like AI note generators mm. that will make up novel mel melodies on their own, and then you can kind of use this to guide it in towards like something more note heavy, something that bounces around a little bit more, something more focused and something like calmer. Really cool. And then did I hear you mention something to me one time about wavetables and making wavetables out of data? Yes, I, 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 that doesn't run too well with all of these other things. Sure. Um, it's a really heavy patch, but it basically takes like the FFT of the eight electrodes is coming out of here. So it's like, it's just a, a crazy amount of numbers and it, um, it doesn't work the best, um, but it does. So you can see it on this screen, but it's you can imagine kind of like, uh, you know, in Logic or Ableton when you have, a, um, you know, the FFT of the EQ, mm -hmm. um, you're kind of doing that with the brain waves from zero to 60 hertz. And then you can kind of take that and transpose it to zero to 20,000 or whatever, whatever you want to do for a synth. So you can kind of take your brain wave wave table and like trans transpose it over to synthesizer wave table. Really amazing. And so now that you've kind of done this, other than performing, I know that you are working on some pretty other cool projects. Like what are you planning to do in the future with this? Yeah, so um, I work with a nonprofit in India um, called CED Society. And um, we work on uh, you know providing musical and artistic opportunities um, for communities there. And I'm really interested in kind of using this as a, a tool for um, people with physical disabilities that they might be able to kind of use this, especially the, um, the muscle control, um, kind of detecting facial muscles. That's, that's one way that a lot of people have, like paraplegics, they've lost other um, functions, but they can still move their eyes and, and move their face a bit. Um, so that you can kind of use to, um, to train so, some sort of control over, over all of this all these cool things, visuals and audio. That's really amazing. I mean, I could see hybrid performances too, using traditional controllers. And then I guess somehow you have to figure out how to let the person rage out a little bit and not have it affect the data. Cause I think for me, the hardest thing would be trying to stay still while I'm performing. Yeah, that's definitely like, it's definitely a bit of a bummer. Um, the other thing is like, you, you know, there's a lot of interference. Like even right now I'm notching out 50 Hertz because we're in Europe and the AC is all 50 and that comes through pretty like stronger than anything else. Um, so it's really, you, you might go to a different venue and there's a bunch of noise for no reason. Or, so there's still like a lot of uh, kind of variables, um, but I think it's really cool to kind of have like a, a subconscious extra layer on top of whatever else you're doing. I think there's a lot of cool um, potential. Absolutely. Well, this is a pretty awesome uh, situation. Let, let's um, talk about what you have here. It seems pretty simple com considering the craziness. I guess most of your complexity is inside the box then. Yeah, there's a big web here um, that gets pretty nuts. But um, I, And I had more ideas, but then it, it turned into a whole thing. So I didn't want to add more peripherals. But um, basically, we have the, um, the OpenBCI, the company that makes the EEG, wrote a processing which is a Java-based um, kind of coding application. And um, so that's parsing the data initially, and then it's sending both the band power and um, raw voltage um, through Max just to kind of do some smoothing and some other um, algorithms that I wrote for it here. And then that's coming over to this computer, which is um, doing, has the, the EEG voltage in, or EEG signals in, and then it, uh, we have Touch Designer that's taking everything out of Ableton. And then it's also sending, actually everything's going through Touch Designer now. So every the EEG, EEG signals are actually going back into Ableton through Touch Designer. So it from here it controls the visuals and and audio. And oh. I think that's, and then there's some audio spectrum stuff. But. Cool, and then what are you doing with this Ableton push here exactly? Um, well, so a lot of, there's a lot of sends and um, groups that are, like the visuals and the audio and the brain waves are all kind of tied together. So they kind of all go into like the same bus. Um, so I, when I'm like hearing it and I'm looking at the visuals, I can kind of control how much like is maybe it's too high and I want to kind of tame it back or, um, and so there's a, there's a bunch of different things, but, um, it basically kind of, this is the, um, like the routing I can do the, you know, um, 
it's much easier to do the, the routing through Ableton uh, in this way, kind of putting everything into the little buses and then um, loading them up here. Okay, cool. So when you're when you're moving those knobs, it's it's also affecting the visuals as well as the audio. Yeah. So right here, like the first one is just the general opacity. So if I do that, it turns down the stars. Oh, and, um, cool. So that way I can fade in between. So I have like a, a a big patch for each song, and then I routed in all the data I wanted to ahead of time, and then I can. Um, there's just a few buses per song, so I can kind of focus on what I know I want to want to deal with instead because there's so many numbers flying around that you, it, it, it's easy to get like very confused. <laughs> and generally, have you found this setup to be hard to set up like every time? Like, do you have a lot of problems or is it working pretty smooth? Uh, it was a rough week. <laughs> uh, I, I used to do all of this through Max and go into Ableton as live. I mean, that's what I did my thesis on last year was doing it that way. But I've just this week, I discovered sending it through Touch Designer as something about um, I guess uh, like resampling it, resampling the data from here. It really has has been nicer on the CPU, and it's just kind of um, had a, like a nice master clock, and, and nothing's got disturbed. So now now it's working. There's still a few weird resolution things here and there when I fire everything up, but it's much. Um, it's much, it's as good as it's ever been. <laughs> well, amazing. I look forward to going through it in more detail. And for now, um, we're going to see you do a little bit of a performance. And do you have any other insight on like maybe how you made the musical part of it? There's a lot of producers in our community as well. Um, yeah, so the um, on this one, I'm really doing a lot of broad strokes um, things in terms of, I, you know, I'm not... Um, uh, controlling it, no, no crazy synthesizer parameters or nothing that can get out of hand um, right here. But when I made the, um, I made most of these sounds plugging these signals into an ARP 2600. Okay. And then recording from there. So it's kind of like a nice conceptual, um, conceptual symmetry where like the, the songs were made kind of by plugging like the, the brain signals into a modular synth. And then I kind of chopped them up and now I'm continuing doing that, but at like a higher level. That's resampling. Tied with the visuals. Yeah, just, just resampling forever. Very cool. <laughs> well, you're about to listen to this performance and to look at it, and all of this is being affected by impulses coming from Calvin's brain, which is pretty incredible.